now, Mystery Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. There's a very fine line between life and death. So fine, it prompted one writer to tell us that in the midst of life, we are in the midst of death. And in the story that follows, we'll see that where there's love and a will to survive, survive we must. We are going on a journey into the macabre. Come with me to a breathtaking cavern in southern Arizona. Roger Markle, professor of geology, is leading a party of his students on a rock hunting expedition. They're deep below the surface of the earth in this little-known cavern, chipping at specimens of sparkling stone. Hold that light a little higher, Joe. Okay. That's better. Now, can everyone see clearly? Yes, sir. Uh, This is a splendid example of pyrite. You'll remember that this is also known as fool's gold because of its yellow color. It's used primarily... Wait. Listen. Good Lord, it's a cave-in. Everybody out. Run to the entrance. Our mystery drama, Someday I'll Find You, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Betsy Palmer. From a cavern in southern Arizona, we go now to a fashionable apartment in Chicago, the home of Professor Roger Markle. Anne Markle, the professor's wife, is in her dressing room getting ready for the opera. Her sister Madge is at the living room bar, mixing a batch of cocktails. Olive or lemon peel, Anne? Olive. Since when did you take up martinis? Oh, about two years ago. Has it been that long since I've seen you? Mm -hmm. Not since Mother's funeral. Oh, that's right. Oh, I wish you'd visit us more often, Matt. Hey, will you zip me up? Sure. You know you're always welcome, and Roger is so fond of you. Oh, honey, you know how it is. We all get into our little ruts. Well, you've just got to stay on a few days after Roger gets back. He's dying to see you. Well, that can be arranged. I've nothing to rush home for. He's due back Sunday. What's he doing this time? Well, he has a group of students exploring some cave in Arizona. Oh. And he wants to write a book about it. Here's your martini, oh, thanks, dear. dear. I'm sure it'll be a good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the book, I mean. Oh. <laughs> well, in his position, he has to publish. It's expected. Well, all the more reason to be proud of him. And I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we'd better call the taxi oh. if we want to make dinner before the... Oh. No, I'll get it, dear. I'll get it. You finish oh. your drink. All right, dear. But it, it might be the valet. I had two of Roger's suits sent out. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Markle? Uh, no, no, no. I'm her sister. Uh, is she at home, please? Yes, she is. Uh, what is it? Detective Holmes, ma'am. I'd, uh, I'd like to see Mrs. Markle. The police? Yes. Who oh, is it, Madge? Who's out there? Uh, come in. What's the matter, Matt? I don't know, Anne. This gentleman is from the police. Police? Mrs. Uh, Markle? Yes? I'm Detective Holmes, 31st Precinct. Uh, Oh. Would you both sit down, please? Well, what is this? It's about your husband, Mrs. Markle. Uh, Professor Roger Markle of the University. uh, Roger, what is it? What's happened? Well, we've had word from the state police in Arizona. He uh, was exploring a cave there. Yes. There was a cave in early oh. today and Mr. Markle hasn't been found. Oh dear God. No, I don't quite understand. You you, you say that Roger what was in a cave in? Yes, three of the students who were with him escaped. They say Professor Markle got them to safety, but before he himself could get out, the whole wall of the cavern collapsed. Oh no. No. Well, that's the story we get from Arizona. Of course, we'll want to question the students more fully when they get home. Uh, They're being flown in tonight. But my husband, R- R- Roger's still out there. Uh, we're, we're not sure of anything yet, Mrs. Markle. 
They say he must have been buried in the collapse. There was no sign of him. They tell us the crews are digging, no, but... Uh... I've got to go to him. I, I, I'll have to fly out tonight. And, dear, there's nothing we can do. No, I don't expect to do anything, but I have to be with him. I, I, I just have to be there. Mrs. Markle, the best thing you can do is stay right here. We'll keep you informed regularly the minute we hear anything. Keep me informed? My husband is dying under tons of earth, and you expect me to sit here waiting to be in far... Oh, all right, Anne. We'll go. We'll fly out tonight. I think we really have to go, Sergeant. If they find him alive, she ought to be there. That's up to you, ma'am. Why are they giving up? Why? Anne, dear, there's no use digging anymore. They've hit solid rock. And Roger's been under there for more than 48 hours. There's, there's just no hope. They can't get to No, him. we came all this way and they've, they've given up. Darling, they did all they could. The least they could do is give me his body to bury. Oh. Anne. Oh. Anne, dear, let me take you home with me. No. No, I want to get back to Chicago. There's so many things that I have to take care of. All right, dear, we'll go back to Chicago. I'll stay with you until you're settled. More coffee, Anne? No, thank you. No. Dinner was lovely. Anne, I've, uh... I've got to bring this up sometime. I know, I know. You you want to be getting home. Well, it's been more than a month now. You know I'd stay as long as you need me, but I've got to get back to Texas for a while. I'll even come back here in a few weeks if you want. No. No, Madge, I've I've got to start adjusting. It's it's time you did go home. Oh, my dear. You know you've been wonderful, and I, I, I just couldn't have gotten through this without you. But you do have your own life, and I've got to start remaking mine. I think the sooner you try, the the better you'll be. <laughs> Somehow, I I don't feel like a widow. I feel as though any minute I'm going to hear Roger's key in the door. I know, Anne, I know. When Ed died, I used to hear, or thought I heard, mm. him coming in the back door. <laughs> Once, I even thought he was in the shower. Oh, Darling, we just don't change overnight. It takes a long time getting used to. You buried it. You had a funeral. I but know. It, you know, it's, it's just impossible to believe death like this. I, I have to take the word of someone that I, I don't even know that my husband is dead. Yes. Yes, I suppose that's, that's even harder to accept. I just don't have any choice. Well, I'll uh, try to get a flight out Sunday. Darling, you've got to promise me one thing. Oh, anything, ma'am. That you'll come visit me. I promise. Maybe in the fall, all right? Definitely in the fall. I'll hold you to it. And I'll call you every Sunday. Oh, yes. Yes, we must keep in touch. And much more often than we have been. But but now, don't you worry about me, Madge. I, I do have lots of friends here at the university, and I'm... I'll be all right. In time. Hello. Anne? How are you? Oh, about the same, Madge. Well, when I called last week, you seemed more cheerful. Oh, you know how it is. Day to day. Well, I'm holding you to our bargain. A visit in the fall. It's the first of October. Yes. Roger's birthday. When can I expect you? Our Texas hospitality is ready and waiting. Oh, I hadn't thought about it, Madge, but... How about a week from today? Yes, I I think I could fly out on the 8th. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. I'm dying to see you. Oh, and I want to see you, too. I'm so anxious to talk with you. That's what sisters are for. I'll expect you a week from today. And you're looking wonderful. I wish I felt it. Listen, one week under our Texas skies and you'll be a different woman. Oh, I'm a different woman, all right. How, uh, how was the plane trip? I hardly noticed. Oh, that's the way it is with these jets. They're so smooth, you'd hardly know you're flying. (laughs) Olive, right? Um... You're still drinking martinis, aren't you? Well, I haven't had a drink since... 
the accident? Well, it's time you did. Oh, here's to, uh... What? There's not much to drink to anymore. I'm sorry. I should have realized. There's nothing worse than phony cheerfulness when you're ripped apart inside. But I thought you'd be a little better by this time. Oh, I didn't mean it that way, Madge. I, I... was doing it for myself, I guess. And I, uh, I... I don't know what to say. Well, I thought time would help. I'm not over it. I'll never get over it. I'm so glad you came anyway. It shows you're not wrapping yourself into a cocoon. Well, I haven't had the time to do that. The university wants me to go back to teaching. Well, that's a marvelous idea. Oh, they're just being nice. But I might take them up on it. When Roger was alive, he was my life. But now I have to do something. Well, for the next two weeks, you have nothing to do but relax. Oh, I wish I could relax. If I ever get over this terrible nagging feeling. It takes time, dear. Roger's death was a shock to you. That's what nags me. I've had the feeling that Roger is not dead. It gets stronger. Anne, don't torture yourself with that. I know you and Roger were very close. It's natural that at a time like this you'd feel a certain spiritual bond. Oh, no, it's more than that, Madge. This is a certainty I have that Roger is alive. I don't think he died in that cave-in. And sometimes we want to believe so strongly... So that we get carried away. No, no, no. This, this time I... All right, Anne. Maybe I'm wrong. If it helps you to believe this way, that's best. If it makes getting up in the morning easier... Oh, it does. But the nights... Oh, those nights. Finish your martini. And I'll tell you what we're going to do tonight. We're going to El Vadro. Across the border. It's a typical Mexican border town, but loads of fun. Even on a Monday night. Oh. You just can't be unhappy with all that Latin well, music, the color, the lights. I don't know if I'm up to that, man. Uh, I know you don't want phony cheerfulness, but try a little gaiety, huh? Just for me. Well, all right. And um, maybe I'll take another martini. <laughs> I'm feeling looser already. <laughs> What did I tell you? <laughs> it is exciting. <laughs> hey, how about a fresh taco? Delicious. Oh, somehow they're better from the street vendors. Mm. Yeah, I would like to buy a silver piece. Oh. I love Mexican silver jewelry. I know the perfect shop. It's on a side street. Ah, they sell all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. But their silver counter is the best in town. Great. Come on. I spend almost every other weekend down here. Oh, I love it. It place. is garish, though. Mad, don't you think? Of course. <laughs> That's what makes it delightful. Uh, Madge. Yes? Look. In the front of that shop. The pictures. What about them? I, I, I've got to have a closer look. And what's the hurry? What is it? Look, look at this painting, Madge. Oh, <gasps> yes. You see it, too. Well... And no, no, really, it's a good likeness. But, but even I... to the little mole on his neck. Oh. Madge, this is a painting of Roger. An exact likeness. And, and look at the date below the artist's name. August of this year. Yes, I see. That was three months after the accident. <laughs> Can it really be a portrait of Ann Markle's late husband, Roger? It's not easy to have your portrait painted three months after you're presumed dead. Unless, of course, you aren't dead. Madge seems to think it's just a likeness. That it's not really Roger Markle in the painting. But try to convince Ann of that. You'll see how impossible that is when I return shortly with Act Two. Coincidence seems to be injecting itself into Anne Markle's life. 
In a small Mexican border town, she has found a portrait of her husband, presumably painted three months after he was buried under tons of earth and rock in an Arizona cave-in. Surely it's coincidence that some artist painted the portrait. But I wonder, perhaps the artist had a model for his painting. Anne has never accepted the fact of her husband's death. It is Roger. There's no doubt. The face, the expression in the eyes, it's, it's Roger. Can you make out the artist's name? I see there's an initial E. C-R-E-N... Crenshaw. E. Crenshaw. Signora is interested in the painting? Oh, very much. It, it happens to be a portrait of my husband. Ah, Signora will surely want to buy it. Oh, yes, I'll buy it. But I, I, I must know where you got it. Why, from the artist. I represent him here. I receive his work on... Oh, you call... I, I did big American word. C- consignment. See, that is what he calls it. Uh-huh. I display them here and get 20% of the selling price. Well, well, where can I find this artist, this E. Crenshaw? Signora, is interested in buying the portrait? No, I'm more interested in finding the artist. Would $50 be satisfactory? A hundred. If you'll take me to the painter, I, I, I must talk to him. Sold for $100. All right. American, of course. Yes. The painter lives just outside the town in the flats. Yes, and now can you give me his address? Oh, Signora, there are no addresses in the flats. Oh, uh... Just ask anyone for the Americano. Americano. Or look for the greenhouse at the end of the row. Oh. He's the only one that's painted. Excuse me, Signora, I will wrap the painting. Anne, you're only going to hurt yourself even more. The man who posed for this can't be Roger. I'll know when I talk to this E. Crenshaw. I'll be able to tell by his answers whether it was Roger or not, but I... I already know it is. You're not thinking of going there tonight. Why not? Well, there aren't any street lights out there. Practically no streets. The flats are nothing but tar paper sheds. Well, will you take me there first thing in the morning? Please, Madge. There aren't any addresses. There aren't any streets. Well, that's what I told you last night. The flats are a sore point with the village Uh, government. Well, why should this Crenshaw want to live out here? But it doesn't cost anything. Oh, there's the greenhouse. Well, certainly different from the rest. (laughs) The artist's touch, no doubt. Yes. It's bigger than the others, too. Uh, And there's your artist. Looks like he's expecting us. Oh, but how would he know? Well, I imagine the grapevine is very well developed down here. Oh, he's waving. Well, at least he seems friendly enough. <laughs> Good morning. Fine day, isn't it? Yes, yes. M- Mr. Crenshaw? Yeah, that's me. Welcome to my humble villa. You were expecting this. I heard a charming American woman was interested in one of my paintings. Bought one, in fact. May we talk? It's very important to me. Certainly. This way, ladies. Thank I have you. fresh coffee on. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm Anne Markle, and this is my sister Madge Connors. Oh, how do you do? Doubly charmed. It's not much of a villa, but I like it. After you, ladies. Oh, wow. What a pad. <laughs> what do the natives think of it? <laughs> they think I'm crazy. <laughs> Sit down. Well, I would like to get right to the point, Mr. Crenshaw. This painting of yours. Yes, I like that one. It's one of the best likenesses I've done. Well, I'm convinced that the man in your painting is my husband. Oh? You painted this last August. Now, how did you meet him? Did, did he tell you his name? No, as a matter of fact, he didn't seem to know his name. What? I met him in a bar one night, the Cantina Flora. He was sitting there staring into a beer. I started sketching him, and we got to talking. You don't mind? Uh, no. You've got a sensitive face. Musician? No. What's your business? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, lots of things. I, I, I'm not really sure. Head a little to the left, please. Mm-hmm. No, thanks. I'm uh, Ed Crenshaw. Jose, two more beers, please. Don't want to tell me your name? Well, it doesn't matter. We all go through life anonymously anyway. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not sure. I, I can't uh, remember exactly. Something wrong? No. I, I don't think so. Why? Well, you don't seem to 
Now nah, forget it. We all have our reasons. Question period over. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to, to get to Acapulco. Uh, you've got a long way to go. Yes, I, I know. I'm uh, trying to find a girl. A girl. I knew there was a lovely girl. And uh, I, I can't quite remember her face. Her name was uh, Anne. Uh, oh, running after instead of away from? No, no, I uh, seem to have run out of money. Head just a little higher, please. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll give you ten bucks for posing. I can probably get you a ride to Acapulco tomorrow for free. I know the comings and goings of everybody in town. Well, that'd be fine. Well, that just about does it. Want to see it? Uh, see what? Here. But that, uh... That looks like someone I know. Oh, I'll fill in the colors later. Uh, listen, uh, you, you stay here a minute. Uh, ha have another beer. I want to make a phone call about that ride, okay? Okay. I went to the phone to call the police. This, this guy needed help. He wasn't drunk. He was dazed. He, he didn't know who he was. I figured the police might have something about a guy missing. Mm -hmm. And? I called him and then went back to the bar. He was gone. Matt, Roger's alive. He's been here. He's alive and dazed and we've got to find him. Now do you believe me? Yes, I do. Mr. Crenshaw, how was this man dressed? Mm, well, work clothes, sort of. And come to think of it, I, I remember noticing how his face didn't seem to go with the clothes. No, my, my husband is a college professor, Mr. Crenshaw, and a, a geologist. Oh, of course. He was in those clothes because six months ago he was digging geological specimens in an Arizona cave, and and there was a cave in. Oh. And he was reported dead. I've been a widow for six months, but I never believed it. No, he escaped from that cave-in, and he is trying to find me. What? We spent our honeymoon in Acapulco 25 years ago, and I'm the girl he's trying to find. I'm Anne. I know this sounds outrageous, Mr. Crenshaw, but I, I believe she's right. Professor Markle is obviously suffering from some sort of amnesia. Can we notify the police between here and Acapulco to, to look for him? Yes, but it's been, what, all, almost two months since he was here. A, a long time. Madge, I want to go. Mr. Crenshaw, you've been so kind. May I offer you no, some money? No, 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 no money at a time like this. But promise to let me know what happens. Oh, I promise. I do promise. Come on, Madge. I'm going to the police. And, th and then I'm flying to Acapulco, to the hotel where we spent our honeymoon. Good morning, my dear. I have a reservation, Mrs. Ann Markle. Oh, uh, one moment, please. Yes, Mrs. Markle, room 511. Uh, will you sign the registry, please? Of course. <clears throat> May I ask how long you've been on the desk here? Four years, madame. Oh. Oh, would you look at this painting, please? Tell me if this man has checked in here in the last month or two. Uh, I would not want to get involved, madame. Uh, you would have to see the manager for that. No, please. Uh, this is a painting of my husband. And I have a very strong reason to believe that he may have come here in the past six to eight weeks. Uh, you see, my husband is suffering from amnesia. Yes. Oh. This gentleman was here about uh, three, uh, no, no, four weeks ago. Oh. I remember him oh, well. You do? Yes, he left without paying his bill. But I'll take care of it. I'll pay it. But, but tell me, when did he leave? Did he say where he was going? No, madame. I remember I was on the desk when he came in. I had just come on duty. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I'd, I'd like a room, please. A certain particular room. Oh, we are fairly well booked, sir. Which uh, room did you wish? Well, it uh, it faces the water, and uh, there's a, there's a little balcony, a balcony with uh, with flowers. We have two hundred rooms like that. Oh, well, let me think. Uh, uh, five something. Five 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 eleven. Yes, five eleven. Uh, let me take a look. Hmm. You are in love. Yes, five eleven is available. Uh, would you sign the register, please? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, uh... Is there something wrong, sir? Uh, no, 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 just... Uh, I'm just trying to think, uh... Oh. There. I 
I'm uh, meeting my wife. I uh, expect she'll be along shortly. Yes, sir, Mr. Smith. Uh, Smith? Did you sign the register, Mr. Smith? I did? Well, yes, sir. Well, how very curious. I wonder why I did that. Well, sir... My, my, my name is, uh... Funny. May, may I have the key, please? Yes, sir. I'm going to our room, and you tell Mrs. Uh, my, my, my wife I've already gone up. I saw him around the hotel for a day or two, and then he vanished. Room 511 was our honeymoon suite 25 years ago. Look, may I see the registry, please, of, of the day that he registered? Oh, yes, madam. Uh, Let's see, September 20th, 30th, yes. Here it is. That is the gentleman's signature. John Smith. Yes. That, that is my husband's handwriting. He used the room, but never checked out. In fact, I have, uh, one moment. In the safe here, I have something uh, one of the maids turned in. Uh, would this have belonged to uh, your husband? <gasps> I gave him this ring on our 10th wedding anniversary. And this Mr. Smith was actually your husband? There is no doubt of it now. How was he dressed? Oh, I, I, I don't really remember, madam. But was he in, like, work boots, you know, and, and the clothes? That... No, 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 no. If he had been, I, I would have hesitated to accommodate him. He was wearing an inexpensive suit, I believe, oh. uh, and he had only a small suitcase. Yes, he, mu he must have bought the clothes in Il Vadro. If uh, madame would uh, care to consider the bill. Oh, oh of course, and add it to mine. I'll, I'll be here for a while. I'm going to try and have the Acapulco police search for him. They will be quite cooperative, madame. Uh, but this was four weeks ago. Do you think he has reason to stay in Acapulco? I don't know. He's suffering from some sort of memory loss, and all I can do is look for him. Just as he seems to be looking for me. Hello? Yes. This is Manuel, uh, on the desk downstairs. Oh, We uh, talked yesterday about your husband. Yes. Something occurred to me last night. Uh, the day before he, uh, well, uh, disappeared, uh, he came to the desk asking for his wife. Uh, no name, just uh, my wife. Yes. And he said he wanted to find her because they had to be leaving for Los Angeles. What? He said his uh, graduate classes were starting and he had to get back. Of course. That's where he'd go next. Uh, Manuel, is it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Would you have my bill made up right away? I I'm flying out as soon as I can get a reservation. Oh, and would you have the operator place a call to Mrs. Madge Connors, C-O-N-N-E-R-S, and that's Laredo, Texas. The area code is 512-768-3112. Madge, I'm on my way to Los Angeles. What? I have one more lead to trace. A little apartment Roger and I had in Westwood when he was studying for his master's at UCLA. Well, what brought that up? Roger was here in Acapulco, Madge. Are you sure? I have Roger's ring. The one I gave him. What? They found it under the bed in the room he had. And the clerk remembered him. He says Roger told him that he had to get back to Los Angeles for graduate classes. And that's exactly where we went when we came back from our honeymoon. Anne, I think it's time you went to the newspapers. You know, you can't skip all over the country. No, no, I don't want that kind of publicity. Not for Roger. But the papers can describe his condition. Someone knowing the story might see him and... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll consider it after I've been to Los Angeles. Do you want me to meet you there? No, thanks, Madge. I'll go alone. And, and I'll call you, honey, from L.A. tomorrow. All right, dear. I'll sit by the phone. And pray, Madge. Oh, pray for me. On a wing and a prayer, Anne Markle goes to Los Angeles for one more trace of her missing husband. It appears that Professor Roger Markle, stunned from the cave-in he escaped in Arizona, is wandering through his past life, trying to find his wife, Anne. And Anne is frantically trying to follow his trail and, with luck, to intercept him. We'll pick up the trail that leads to a surprising outcome when I return shortly with Act Three. <laughs> Yeah.
In these days of modern jet transportation, one can go anywhere in a matter of hours. The jet plane is indeed a magic carpet that can eliminate the distance between lovers and bring them together. Now Anne Markle rides such a magic carpet, settling gently on the runway at Los Angeles, closing the distance between her and her husband, whom she's sure is in this city, looking for her. A cab ride to a Westwood hotel, a restless night, and next morning we join Anne in front of a neat white garden apartment. Yes? You're the superintendent. That's right, but we haven't got any vacancies, ma'am. No, 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 it's not that. I'm looking for someone. Yeah? Have you by any chance seen this man in this painting recently? <laughs> Last week. Last week? Yeah. Caught him trying to get into apartment 2A. Our apartment. What was that? The, the man was my husband. We lived in apartment 2A 25 years ago. 25 years ago? Yes. Yeah, maybe that explains it. He raised a hell of a fuss. Oh, he's suffering from amnesia. What, what happened? People in 2B called. Said some guy was hammering on the door to the apartment next door. I look out the window across the pool. Sure enough, this guy is on the balcony in front of 2A, banging on the door. I hightail it over. Anne! Anne, open this door! Hey, what's going on here? What you want? I want to get into my apartment. Anne, are you in there? This isn't your apartment. The Murphys live here. I took this place a month ago, just before my honeymoon. Look, Mag, if you want trouble, I know how to hand it out. Now, scram. Who are you to tell me to get out? I'm getting Mr. Foster. Uh, Mr. who? The super. Now, you're the one who'd better scram. I'm the super. The devil you are. I never saw you before. Now, look, buddy. Let's go quietly, and I won't call the police. Uh, Otherwise... Why doesn't she answer? Anne! Okay, let's go. Come on. Anne, why don't you answer? Anne! Anne! Anne. He called my name. It was you he was looking for? Oh, yes. And he called my name. That means he knows who I am. Maybe he even knows who he is by now. What, what happened then? Where, where did he go? I ushered him out to the street. And didn't see him again. And this was a week ago? A week yesterday. If he's like you say he is, the police might have picked him up. Why don't you try them? Oh, if only they have. Sure hope you find him soon. Fellow running around like that could get into trouble. Hello? Madge, it's Anne. Anne, what's the news? Roger's on his way home to Chicago. I'm flying out immediately. What? Will you come and stay with me? I I need you now, Madge. Well, of course. I'll leave tonight. But how do you know he's going home? He got a ride. He might even be there looking for me. And I, Look, I'm going to tell you all about it when I see you. <laughs> and I even hounded the airlines trying to see if Roger might have flown out of Los Angeles during the week. And nothing, right? Now, mm. come on, stop the cat and mouse and tell me how you know Roger's in Chicago. I was having lunch in a little coffee shop in the valley. Yes. A truck stop, really. And I'd been walking and showing Roger's painting. I, I guess people thought I was a crazy woman. Well, it was a little erratic. But I put the painting down on the counter, mm -hmm. and when I ordered a chicken sandwich, the counter clerk looked at the painting and told me Roger had been there. Oh. He was positive, because as he put it, the guy was trying to get a ride to Chicago. Well, he told me one of the truck drivers offered Roger a ride, and they left together. Oh, Anne! Now, this was six days ago. All the time I was chasing around Los Angeles, Roger was on his way home. Oh. Well, I, I almost expected him to open the door for me when I got in this afternoon. He wasn't there, of course, but now at last we're in the same city together. Oh, Roger's coming home. How about a movie tonight? No. No, I want to go to Kelsey's. Again? We've been there three nights in a row. Matt, I feel so sure that Roger might turn up there. We spent so many happy evenings there when we first came to Chicago. Honey, we've got the police and all the newspapers on the lookout. Why don't we just sit tight? I can't, Madge. I have to keep doing something to, to keep from going crazy. Okay. Kelsey's it is. But I think that bartender is starting to wonder about us. Well, we're 
pretty sure at least that Roger's in Chicago or on his way. Yes. Just a matter of time. Why not try to relax? I'm closer to him than I've been yet. I can't relax. I, it just might be any minute, even here. I, I feel that I'm doing something. Putting myself in this path, perhaps, only. But in his condition, anything might happen to him. I, I almost feel that I ought to be on this street match. Well, let's look at the window. Look. What? It's Roger. He's there on the sidewalk. He's looking right in at me. Roger? Good Lord. Excuse me, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm in a ter 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 terrible hurry. Excuse me. Ro Roger. Roger? Roger? Anne, where is he? I don't know. I saw Roger at the window. I, I, I thought he saw me. He, he looked right at me, but he's gone. Oh, I've got to find him. He can't be far. Anne, wait. Wait, it is too late. Anne! Oh, thank heavens for you, Lieutenant Holmes. Well, I heard the call come over the radio. <laughs> Curious. I knew immediately it had something to do with this Professor Markle. I'm frantic about Anne. Where could she go? Well, she could have turned down any of these side streets. Oh, she's so upset she'd take any chance to find her husband. Mrs. Connors, do you think Professor Markle is alive? Why, of course. I mean, Mrs. Markle isn't imagining this, wanting to hope... I thought it might be like that at first, Lieutenant, but I was with her when she found the painting and when she talked with the artist. And then Professor Markle did turn up in Acapulco and in Los Angeles. And you saw him tonight? Well, Anne saw him first. M my back was to the window, but when I turned, I saw someone moving away. Well, if he's alive in this city, we'll find him. Tonight, Mrs. Markle, too. No, he, he just couldn't have gone this far so fast. He didn't recognize me. He, he looked as though he, he didn't even see me. Maybe I'd better go back. He couldn't have come this far. Oh, Roger. Roger, where are you? Anne, over here. Madge, is that you? Oh, thank God we found you. I called the police. I'm with Lieutenant Holmes. Come, get in. Oh, Madge, I've lost him. I've sent out an alert on the whole area, Mrs. Markle. We'll find him. Get in. We'll keep on cruising. I just didn't know which way to turn. I took a chance and went left, but he, he must have gone the other way. We'll cruise back. Keep your eyes open. It's harder to recognize someone at night. Patch. There, look. Huh? That man at the end of the block. Where? I, I think... Yes. Oh, stop, Lieutenant. Please stop. He's walking toward us. That... That's Roger's walk. It is Roger. See him? He's in the light of the street lamp now. Anne. Roger, over here, Roger. Oh, he doesn't hear me. Anne, wait. Roger. Roger. Anne, stop. Look out. Get out. Anne. Anne. Oh, God. Anne. Car 51 to headquarters. Ambulance to Elman Spring. Ambulance. Come on. Back, everybody. Please, please. Stand back, everybody. I can't look. I can't look. Is she, is she? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, why did she run like that? It wasn't Roger. There wasn't anyone there on the street. Anne. Anne, there you are. Oh, Roger, at last. Oh, I've been looking everywhere for you, darling. I know, dearest. Oh, I knew you were alive all the time. I kept looking. I kept following you. I never gave up. You were following me? Yes. Well, I was looking for you. I, I couldn't find you at the honeymoon suite and then in Los Angeles, our old apartment, I remember? Yes. Uh, well, you, you weren't there either. And I was confused. I kept trying to think, where would Anne go next? And then I knew. Yes, yes, we left Los Angeles when I got the teaching job in Chicago. And that's just what I did. When I learned you were on your way to Acapulco, I just knew you were looking for me in the old, the old places. <laughs> I, I, I tried to think where you'd go next. Yes, two minds with a single thought. Because we've been one since the day we were married. Yes. Oh, Anne, I knew, I knew that someday I'd find you. Come, Roger. Oh, let's go home. Home? Mm hmm To our apartment. Well, that isn't home for us anymore, Anne. Roger, dear. 
I know you've suffered a terrible shock, but we'll, we'll work it out together. You'll be fine. It'll take time, but trust me. You don't understand, do you, Anne? Oh, I do, darling. And I'm going to help you. No. No, I should have realized. It's too soon. Well, what's too soon? You'll understand in time. What is it, Roger? What are you trying to say? I didn't realize the truth until I saw you. And now I know. And you'll know soon, too, my darling. Roger, I trust you. If you say so, then that's enough for me. Come in. It's time for us to go. To be together, always. And that's all I want, Roger. Is to be together, always. Hey, don't look so worried. Let me tell you the trouble I had realizing just what was happening. I'm sorry, Mrs. Connors. There's no pulse. Oh, dear God. Mrs. Markle is dead. Love has a way of fulfilling itself. Across eternity, Anne and Roger Markle find each other. And Madge, earthbound and mourning for her sister, cannot know the joy Roger and Anne are sharing. She will bury her sister's body without the slightest inkling of Anne and Roger's present happiness. For they love one another and have found one another. And what more could either of them ask? I'll be back shortly. If you have not yet prepared your will, please listen carefully. Without a will, the laws of the state and not you will determine who receives your property and in what amounts. Who manages the affairs of your estate? Your choice as guardian of your minor children may never be known. Your loved ones could face unnecessary legal costs and needless court delays. Now, for only $12.95, you can make your own will quickly and safely with the American Will Kit. You'll receive simple fill-in-the-blank will forms with easy-to-follow directions. The forms were prepared by lawyers to be valid in all 50 states. Order now, and you'll also receive, free of charge, our easy-reading personal protection guide, giving you important tips and special information that can save you money. Now is the time to take advantage of this special mail-order opportunity. To order, call toll-free 1-800-542-1212. Only $12.95 plus shipping. That's 1-800-542-1212. Money back if not satisfied. Call now, 1-800-542-1212. The rent bill, the car payment, Betty's braces. I wish I was made of money. I wish I could fall asleep. Sandman, help me to sleep. Mr. Sandman. It's me, but not with sand. These days, for occasional sleeplessness, I have Compose Sleep Aid. Compose helps you fall asleep faster, sooner than without it. I'm sleepier already. Sleep well. Compose. Use only as directed. C-O-M-P-O-Z. Recommended by the Sandman. Some people chase rainbows, others chase butterflies. We're all pursuing something in life, a hope, a dream, a mate, even happiness. And when the object of our pursuit is love, no barrier is too great to overcome. For love is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the monarch butterfly of all human needs and emotions. And in our story just concluded, it was the force that transcended even death. Our cast included Betsy Palmer, Joan Shea, Larry Haynes, Gil Mack, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. the family game show we've asked our contestant parents how often their children exercise parents what's your answer one hour a day what do you say kids almost never except for 10 minutes of recess at school we had no idea don't feel bad most parents overestimate the amount of exercise their kids get they often think their kids get all the exercise they need at school now don what's the winning answer how much exercise should kids get well, Bob, it's one to two hours of vigorous exercise a day. You know, daily exercise is a must for all of us, especially young people. One to two hours each day will keep young people fit and healthy, more alert for school, better able to handle stress, off the streets, out of trouble. 
insurance. You can win big. Make sure daily exercise is a part of your family game. Remember. A message from the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. WWJ News Radio 95. I'm Earl Dickinson. And in the next few minutes, we will have complete details on these stories of police chase in Detroit ends in the arrest of a man wanted for murder. A classic Tucker automobile auctions for a record price. Communication workers at Michigan Bell give the okay to a new contract over there. These stories coming up along with sports at... Uh, 115, and you know by now the Toronto Blue Jays have gotten back into this playoff series with the Oakland A's. Weather command predicts partly cloudy and cool this morning, a low in the upper 30s, very chilly. Saturday, later today, partly cloudy, windy, cool, a high only about 52 degrees. Look ahead to Sunday, partly sunny, another chilly day, maybe an afternoon sprinkle. A high pushing that 50 degree mark. All news, all the time. News Radio 95, WWJ, Detroit. CBS News. I'm Jim Chenevy. Some low-income elderly folks can sleep a little easier. The Senate has refused to repeal catastrophic health coverage. The upper chamber instead voted to preserve some benefits of the plan while killing off the unpopular surgery.